All right, CNT 120, Chapter 2 Lab. In the previous podcast, we did our logical diagram. Uh, and again, this looked very much like our logical tab in Packet Tracer. Um, so we did that diagram using our draw.io, saved that for submission, exported that and saved that for submission. We're now going to do a rack diagram that's kind, it's going to be kind of like the physical tab. Um, in our package tracer, when we were we clicked on the physical tab and we browsed our way into the closet, we are going to make a drawing of our network rack. Uh, again, this gets used for documentation for what equipment is where, model numbers, serial numbers, that sort of thing. So we're going to use draw.io again to create a rack diagram. So I'm going to go over here to my folder. This is where I have my chapter two lab samples. I'm going to say new. I'm going to go down here to draw.io again. And I'm going to throw this file name in there. Again, keep the draw.io extension. And we're going to just call this diagram 2, just for simplicity. Again, keep that draw.io file extension. Um, and again, since I did this previously, I'll call this diagram 2 version 2. Um, and I will do create. And we're going to recreate this diagram, which is kind of like what we had in our packet tracer file. It's very similar, uh, very similar in nature. This is kind of the equipment that is in, let me scroll up here. That is, this is kind of the equipment that's in this diagram that we did earlier. So I'm trying to do kind of like a physical representation of this logical diagram. Not everything is there, but most things are there. Most of the core of that equipment is there. So again, uh, I tried to use the names that we can search for to put into our rack diagram here. So first thing I'm going to search for is this numbered rack cabinet. And again, since we did the more shapes previously, we have all these rack, icon, rack icons available to us. So we're going to search for numbered rack cabinet. And here we go. We're going to drag this out in the uh, screen here and I'm going to drag it down till I get maybe like 30 some uh, full rack is 42 but if I get like 30 some that should be enough for what we're doing and I can make it larger if I need to okay um, that's my first piece so I'm going to double click on that and my, my name goes down here so we'll call it numbered rack cabinet just like we did uh, just like we have in the diagram over here um, and now let's start putting our pieces in. Let's just put the power strip in. So we'll search for power strip. There we go. We're going to drag this guy over and drop him in here. Once he drops him in, he kind of resizes. Um, and I will scroll. I will kind of slide him to the top. Let's double click on and you'll see the icon comes over to the side. So we'll do power strip. And since I have one more of these in the rack, let's highlight it and do control C. And I'm going to do control V paste and I will slide it down here and again I can move those around as I need to um, let's get our patch panel in here uh, so we'll do patch panel this would be here just like in our uh, physical tab in our packet tracer file and I'm going to grab the 48 port I could do the 24 96 I'll just grab the 48 I will drop this in here right near the power strip I'll double click and I will do our 48 port patch panel there we go. Now, in an equipment rack, we normally have some management panels to hold the patch cables. Um, and here they call them horizontal cable ducts. So we're going to search for horizontal, if I can type today, cable duct. And I will grab that guy and drop him in here. I'll put one right below the patch panel. And I will do horizontal cable duct. And I will need one later, but let me get the switch in here first. Just like in our equipment rack, we had the patch panel into a switch. We're going to do the same thing here. Um, and I think I just used the generic name Cisco Catalyst switch because um, there's a bunch in here. We'll do a Cisco Catalyst switch. We should see a number show up. Uh, we're going to scroll down here. I'm just going to pick one of these. I'm going to grab maybe like uh, this 48 port 10 gig. Okay, that's essentially what we got there. We'll drag that over and we'll just label this our um, Cisco Catalyst switch. And I'll just put a note here. It's a 10 gig 48 port just for my own notes, from my own memory. Um, and now what we would need is we also need a horizontal cable duct by that guy as well. 
Um, so I'm going to highlight this guy and go Control C, Control V, and I'm going to slide him underneath. Yeah, I know um, I, I might have things in another different number slot than over here. That's okay. Um, and if my icon is just slightly different, that's okay. Do not panic. Some people do worry about that. I'm um, getting approximately what's in here. So there's my patch panel with a, a, a wire management panel to hold the patch cable until it comes down here in through this management panel into the switch. That's how it's typically done. Um, let's add our ASA and our router in here. So we're going to search for Cisco ASA, Adaptive Security Appliance. Um, and I think there is one right there. That's good. Here we go. We'll drop that in. Double click Cisco ASA. Okay. Um, let's do the Cisco 2911 router. I'm just going to search for Cisco 2911, see if that pops up. And let's go more results. Let's go more results. I'm hoping you show up somewhere. So let's go for... Let's try that. We'll be a little more specific this time. There we go. It's way down at the bottom. Well, there's a 1901. Let's see if we can find it this way. There we go. There's the Cisco 2911. And we'll drop that in there. And again, I'll do Cisco 2911 router. There we go. Um, and now we'll put an, uh, a UPS unit down here in the bottom. Um, I think this one came up APC Smart. APC Smart UPS. Um, and again, I'll kind of pick the middle of the road here. I think that's what I did in the uh, in our diagram over there. I picked kind of the middle of the road. There we go. And I'll call this my APC Smart UPS, Uninterruptible Power Supply. There we go. And again, if they're in a different number spot, that's okay. If the icon looks slightly different, that's okay. We're trying to get the bulk of it here, bulk of it in here. Um, and this is most likely what, I'm going to scroll up here, what this kind of network would start looking like in the closet. Um, we don't have all the pieces, but we have most of them in here. Um, and this would give me a place that I can start putting details in. Uh, I might put the model number here. I might put the serial number here. I might put um, maybe some configuration information about what IP address is this or um, what kind of VLANs are on this switch or what kind of ports are on this router. This would give me a spot to be able to start documenting things I need for my network. All right, once I have this guy situated, and again, if I need to move things around to, to get them to line up a little better, I do that. When I'm done, I will do a file export as JPEG. And again, I'm just going to do a download. So I have this to submit to D2L. And if I go to my downloads folder again, I'm going to go out here to my downloads. Well, there it is right there. Diagram 2 version 2. I'll double click on that to show you. And there is my rack drawing that I could submit to D2L. All right. So there is my second diagram for submitting to D2L. So at this point, I'm going to scroll down, we should have the text files from my cabling of the packet tracer file. I should have the diagram from my logical diagram from draw.io and then my rack diagram from draw.io. So what I'll do is I will open my Dropbox on D2L, and I will submit that first text file with my with my ping and IP config results, then the logical diagram, and then my rack diagram. I'll submit all three of those files to the Dropbox on D2L for my Chapter 2 lab, and then we'll be done. Um, some of the things we just did in this lab are going to help us with future labs, as well as our design lab we're going to be doing very soon.